Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. You're definitely in for a treat because I'm going to be reviewing a wonderful timeless classic that came out on August 15, 1939, which is now celebrating its 80th anniversary. Hard to believe. Yes, I'm talking about The Wizard of Oz. Yes. Based on the L. Frank Baum books, you know the story. It's about a young farm girl from Kansas, lives with her dog Toto, who suddenly winds up in a mystical and mysterious land after a tornado hits, where it turns out to be the land of Oz, where you have the Munchkin land. You have uh, Emerald City, even the forests, and of course the Yellow Brick Road. So the idea of this was that you know, she was trying to find her way back home, seeing that she's not in Kansas. She meets um, the Wicked Witch of the North, named, she meets the Witch of the North, Linda, helps her guide her where she was going to go, joining in with all these munchkins around, but then you have the Wicked Witch of the West, who was about to terrorize her after her sister died from her house you know, that fell on her, and was ready to take uh, her ruby slippers, which eventually went straight to her, and then when she follows the, her journey for the Yellow Brick Road, she meets a Scarecrow, a Tin Man, and a Lion, who's a coward. So together, they're about to go off to see the Wizard, the wonderful Wizard of Oz. So that way, they can help them all out. Before the Wicked Witch of the West uh, goes after them. Okay. <laughs> now this is the 75th anniversary edition that I got back in 2014. As you may already know, because if you saw my outside of town video, you know during Black Friday, yeah, I was going to stores like Walmart, mostly as well as Best Buy or even Target for that matter, but mostly those two stores, so I can get as many movies as possible for a lot cheaper. And I know Black Friday is coming up too next week, so I'm hoping to get more films. And yes, this has um, over two hours of features uh, that's included. But unfortunately, they're not porting half of it. Because they do have the two this uh, 70th anniversary edition, which is right here. Yep. As you can see, I love this cover art. It looks so shiny. Even though it's a white uh, background, but you do see the rainbow, the title, embossed, and you see the rest of the characters. Yeah. Dorothy Gale, uh, along with uh, Scarecrow, Tin Man, Kauri Lion. Yeah. Of course, Toto. <laughs> and, yeah, there's, there's more features on the back. Yes, which has, uh, well, this one on this release has the commentary with historian John Frick, I think. It has a restoration featurette, illustrated video storybook, supporting cast profile roundup, yeah, with Dolby Surround 5.1, original mono included, music and effects only, and Dolby 5.1 sing along feature. With this too being the wonderful Wizard of Oz, the making of a movie classic, and memories of Oz TV specials. So yes, you get all of that. Plus archival making of and virtual spectre featurettes, Harold Arlen's home movies, outtakes and deleted scenes that's included, and sets of stills and theatrical trailer galleries, auto the yeah, audio jukebox of recording sessions, radio shows and promos. Yeah. Well, the Blu-ray does contain the, the new documentary at the time, which was narrated by Martin Sheen, because 
the 1990s special had Angela Lansbury. And I love those cover arts that it got. It just looks uh, ent entirely breathtaking and beautiful. That's exactly the way it's supposed to be. I know it's been released many times on home video, of course. You know, they've been releasing it ever since the 70s. You know, seeing that it's been on TV for so long. I mean, it was on CBS before they moved it to TBS, TNT, or even TCM for that matter. <laughs> It's definitely the most popular film ever made, even though it was a troubled production when it started. Because M MGM was very interested in doing a, a musical by adapting a story for for um, the L. Frank Baum books after Disney had their success with Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, 1947. So they knew studios were very interested in and doing a fairy tale classic so it will be remembered by yeah, no doubt about it you know where it blends from black and white or sepia tone for that matter and translated and transferred directly into free strip technicolor so you get to see how vivid brighter luscious and beautiful uh, colors all in the mix. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, oh, and just to, a note on that, I actually have the Life Magazine 75th um, anniversary of The Wizard of Oz right here. Yes, there's already an 80th anniversary too available, which could be quite different from this one, but I got this at the 99 cent store back in 2014. Yes, I got it for a very good price because you know, they were getting rid of it, so why not? I mean, I'd love to have something that's more classic. Yeah, it's just pictures of of the cast, as you can see. I know it's hard to hold up. Uh, and just some information on how they did it. Yeah, you, know, you can see the sets. Uh, it's hard to hold this. Uh, yes. You can see the sets on how they did this film. They did it at uh, the MGM studio lot in Clover City, California, which is now Sony. You can see uh, Dorothy in the ruby red slippers. Yeah, where she had to count three times, where she had to tap three times, and that way she'll say, there's no place like home. <laughs> Uh, yes, a lot of information. Some more photographs right here. Uh, I know there's, there's a lot. I'm just going to show you just s some of them. Um, it just tells you all the information. It even shows you all the, the book and design here. Okay. Yeah, this is one of those earlier um, stages that they got. Yeah, it was a little earlier musical. Yeah. This is the whole audience. Yeah, you can see MGM's Amazing, The Wizard of Oz on top. More information, too. Uh, yeah, there's a movie poster. The entire cast. And how it premiered. Was it premiered in Hollywood at Women's Chinese Theater? There's um, the offer of Frank Baum. Yeah, who created all the Oz books and all the other stuff. That's just the rest of the crew. Yeah, these are all the students and everyone who's reading his books. The wonderful Wizard of Oz. And See all the other followers, the sequels that they're planning on. You can imagine if Oz, you can see the Scarecrow and Tim in. All these other plays here. Okay. Okay, I know. 
going over the place, but hey. Um, just actors and stuff. Yep, and there's, um, there's Ray Bulger as the Scarecrow. Sorry, I just I keep doing this. Yeah. And yeah, there's Julie Garland, the rest of the Munchkins, and our producers and directors and stuff. Cast and crews. And you can see the, uh, the hollow tree, and you see all the filmmakers and everyone involved and doing the set, all the costume design and all that. Yeah, you can see the composer and uh, all the rest here. Yeah, that's really Garland right there, you see totally. Oh, and here's the rest of the cast. Okay. I know. These are like costume takes and tests here to see how it'll work. Yeah. You see, you know, Julie Garland is holding total right there. Yeah. No, it's, it's hard to yeah, and this is how they presented it when they were working on the film. And yeah, they projected it too. Yeah. yeah, they're just mixing in using, you know, free strip uh, to the color or, or mix of other cameras where they shot others in yeah, set where they were at the forest. And you can see the yellow brick road right there. All these other photographs here. Yeah. Black and white. Yes, and then you see <laughs> Dorothy you know, following the yellow brick road with uh, ruby slippers. It's a beautiful shot. Very iconic. And yeah, then there's the movie poster. bit of a dick giveaway, I know, but hey, I, I like to show you all this stuff. Yeah, that's um, Dorothy Gale <laughs> singing Somewhere Over the Rainbow, which became, of course, um, an Oscar-winning hit. Yeah, won the Best Original Song, along with the original score. Yes, and there's Margaret Hamilton as... Uh, as uh, what's her name? as uh, Miss uh, Amaya Gulch, which I guess way she'll be the Wicked Witch of the West. Right now in the bright school, yes, yeah, she just got her leg bitten. Yes, yeah, so you can see uh, Professor Marble right there, which is played by Frank Morgan. He played several characters, the wizard, yes, the Wizard of Oz. Emerald City Doorman, the Cabby, Emerald City Guard, even the Angry Face Projection. I mean, <laughs> he's a delight. And yeah, you can also see, you know, Dorothy with Toto in the house already with the tornado hitting. Yes, you can even see the house moving around, spinning around, and the cyclone. And then, of course, you can see where where the house landed on the Wicked Witch of the East with the ruby red slippers, yeah, because it killed her. Uh, and there's uh, Glinda, the Dorothy, the rest of the Munchkins in Munchkin Land, just telling her to follow her journey. And there's the rest. <laughs> oh, God. There's Dorothy. Once again, then you see a scarecrow. And yeah, doing her yeah, doing his bits, uh, if I only have a brain. The Tin Man which they had to put in the oil yeah, they had to put the oil can so he could be revived since so rusted. Yes, if he only had a heart. 
And of course, the Carly Lion. <laughs> it was about to scare him off, but he couldn't because, well, he's a coward. He doesn't have courage, but he only had a nerve. <laughs> And they're finally off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. Before they went there, they fell asleep in the poppies. Uh, Dorothy suddenly winds up. Part of uh, Wicked Witch of the West's tricks. Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> the doorman and says, Bell, out of order. Please knock. so hard to... Okay, I know. It's supposed to be some of it, but I'm just... I'm going over places. Yes, there is the wizard. <laughs> and a ghostly face. It's filled with fire and smoke. It scares them off. Okay, yeah, and they were all frightened. Because they had to do their important test. Yes, and there's the Wicked Witch of the West. Yes. I'll get you, my pretty. Your little dog, too. Um, I'll get you. Um, I'll get you, you little pretty. Your little dog, too. <laughs> yeah, this is this is where they trapped her, and you know you see uh, on him, and, and of course they melt they melt to her when she threw a bucket of water at her accidentally, which is about to stop. Because after all, you know, the witch was about to burn the scarecrow, and yes, that's where we get to meet the wizard, the Vaz. Yeah, where he he's a humbug, and he fooled them all. And he was off to be on his way before Linda came by and helped her take her back home. Yes, they got all all this that they need, and of course, no place like home. And <laughs> I know, it's a dead giveaway, but I, I just can't help it. I, you know, everyone knows about this film. So, you've just seen all the photographs. Um, I'm just going to show you all this other stuff, that's all. Um, but, yeah, it's just random stuff. And, you know, there's even a Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade um, of the Tin Man. And when the movie came out, it was so popular. Yeah. But, unfortunately... Um, didn't make its profit when it came out, <laughs> but it did had re-releases to help it save um, the film, but it gained more viewership for everyone. In fact, um, I actually went to see the, the re-release uh, in, in 1989 or 1990 because they actually released it as a double feature with The Little Mermaid, and I remember watching this at the Eagle Theater in Eagle Rock, California. Yes, that's where I got to see all these second run double features. They were playing the movie. Um, I think from what I remember, yes, the film, I believe, was in black and white, going directly to color. I think this was before they added the sepia tone later on to match it, to make the movie look even better than ever, because it's been restored, remastered several times, and a home video and everything. I know there's an IMAX 3D release. And I remember because before the movie started, uh, they started to play the music uh, from the movie um, while the curtains were closed before they were open. <laughs> um, yeah, the class of 1939. Yes, you can see Gone with the Wind. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Yeah, that's Victor Fleming's. Uh, Next film, which came out the same year as The Wizard of Oz, and all these other films coming up too. Uh, it's a western. Yeah, it's just the usual stuff. But I, I'm not gonna show you all of them. And yes, Long Live the Wizard. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's so hard. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, this is where they received the Hollywood Walk of Fame for all the munchkins around and everything. And they have, um, yeah, they had a lot of theatrical plays, musicals, and Broadway plays around. 
Is it so popular? Yes, there's even the Tom and Jerry cartoon. Yeah, it was, that was the movie that they had. With, um, yeah, a lot of animated specials. And, of course, there's a lot of follow-ups. You know, we got Oz the Great and Powerful. The Muppets, uh, The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> yeah, not a good one. And, of course, uh, the underrated Return to Oz. Not a sequel, a standalone movie with uh, uh, first a book. Yeah, when Disney uh, worked on them. And, yep, that's them just going directly to Emerald City. So I'll have to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. And there's Dorothy. <laughs> okay, yeah, I know, I'm taking up a lot. Um, okay, you know, I love to have fun and everything, but let's just start the review. Stars Julie Garland, Frank Morgan, Ray Boger, Jack Haley, Burt Lair, Billy Burke, Margaret Hamilton, Clara Blandick, Charlie Grapewin, Pat Walsh, Terry, the dog, Mitchell Lewis, and Adriana Casalotti. It's written by Nora Langley, Florence uh, Wilson, and Edgar Allan Wolfe based on the book The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum and it's directed by Victor Fleming which I know there there's two directors joining in um, which happens to be Richard Forp, Norman Torog and others yes I know we have Buddy Epson from which I'm going to explain who went on to do the TV show The Billy Hillbillies as uh, Jack Clampett went on to play the detective of the title role, Bonnaby Jones, but yes, he was going to play the Tin Man, but was replaced by Jack Haley after after having some reaction to the aluminum powder. He had got allergic to them, almost gave him emphysema, so he was in critical condition at the hospital for the place. Yeah, I know it was a trouble production that happened here and there. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, the movie begins in sepia tone, black and white form, Kansas. We meet a young farm girl, Dorothy Gell, played by Julie Garland, lives with her dog, Toto, played by Terry, on a farm that belongs to Aunt Am and Uncle Henry, both played by Clara Blandick and Charlie Grapevine. We join in with three farm boys, Hunk, Hickory and Zeke, all played by comedians Ray Bulger, Jack Haley, and Bert Leo. Anyway, one day, Toto bites a neighbor named Miss Amira Gulch, played by Margaret Hamilton, on the leg, leading to obtain an order from the sheriff that she wants uh, Toto to be unutherized, meaning kill him. But Dorothy plays and tries to not let that happen along with Aunt Anne because it's wrong because Toto didn't mean to do this but no choice but to have Gulch um, take Toto away in her basket surprisingly enough he escaped and returns back to Dorothy so both Dorothy and Toto decide to run away so that way Gulch won't go after her and on their way, they meet Professor Marble, who happens to be a fortune teller, very kind, played by Frank Morgan, uses his crystal ball to tell Dorothy that Aunt Anne may be dying of a broken heart, so Dorothy had to return back home as soon as possible. That is until a storm approaches, which is a tornado twister, and Aunt Am, Uncle Henry, and the rest of the farm boys decided to go down into the fallout shelter so they'll be safe. Yeah, while the tornado was ready to hit, Dorothy was trying to, to find where they are, trying to go in, but then she wants up inside the house, in her room, uh, along with Toto. But soon um, she got knocked unconscious, 
you know, as it blasts its way through the window, through the storm, and then next thing you know, um, she was woken up with Toto, and then she begins to spot it's like several people flying around in the cyclone. Yeah, you can see like you know, one of their relatives or all the people next door, like neighbors and stuff. You see all these cows. And then next thing you know, you, you spot uh, Miss Gulch, who would turn into, you guessed it, the Wicked Witch of the West and a boomstick. So <laughs> that really explains that she really is a witch. Then the house finally landed all the way down into a, a mystical but very wonderful place called the Land of Oz. And that's where it turns into color. All technicolor beautiful, vivid, brighter colors than ever before because apparently she says Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore we must be somewhere over the rainbow yes, which happens to be the song that she actually sang when she was still in Kansas Yeah. so that's when she meets a good witch of the north named Glinda who's played by Billy Burke so of course the, the house had landed in munchkin land filled with munchkins around you know getting to know her but then of course the wicked witch of the east was killed that's where we left off with her legs and, and her ruby slippers and that's where we meet the Wicked Witch of the West, of course, Hamilton, arrived to claim her ruby slippers. But Glinda suddenly transported those slippers to her, Dorothy. So now that's where the Wicked Witch decided to swear revenge against her. Yeah. I'll get you, my pretty. And your little dog, too. So, of course, um, this is going to set her journey for, for Dorothy to try to get her way back home. Yeah, but first, you know, she got to introduce all the munchkins, you know, through their land, with many others. And then she has to follow the yellow brick road, as Glenda tells her. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road. <laughs> okay. I, I know, I'm getting over myself. So yes, she had to follow the yellow brick road straight to Emerald City where she'll be able to find the wonderful Wizard of Oz, Frank Morgan himself. Okay, so on her way she meets a scarecrow, yeah, played by Bulger, who doesn't have a brain. Of course he was confusing her with several directions here, um, even though he didn't speak you know, through his mouth movements but later on he did he's made out of straw so you, you begin to notice how rubbly he really is you know when he walks and stuff and had trouble getting stuck and tr tries to scare all these crows around but couldn't so that's where he sings the song if I only have a brain so they're about to be off to their next journey that's where they wind up in in the forest where you begin to see those hollow trees yeah filled with apples. They're about to grab some apples, but no such luck. I mean, they scared them off, and <laughs> the scarecrow tried to trick them. So they threw apples at him. So. Then next, they spotted um, the Tim Man, which is the Tim Woodsman. Yep. Haley played. Um, unfortunately, all um, rusted completely because of the rain that happened a couple years ago. That's why he couldn't move. So they had to bring in the oil can that they found and to revive him. You know, have him drink or trying to put oil on his arms, legs, the entire body, all of that, so that way he'll be able to move as quickly as he can. He even has a song, If I Only Have a Heart. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, um, they're on their journey until they meet the cowardly lion yes who is trying to uh, scare them off and he's just doing 
doing the war and and doing the put him up, put him up. I'll get you. Put, put him up, put him up. <laughs> of course, he was about to chase down Toto, and then Dorothy just slaps him. No, he's not bleeding. Don't worry. <laughs> Telling him you should be ashamed of yourself. Um, you know, biting the Toto. I wasn't gonna bite him or anything. <laughs> that sort of thing. Yeah, but of course he needed courage, and that's where he says, "If I only have a nerve." <laughs> so now, of course, I I also forgot to mention. Yes, before they met the cowardly lion. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my! Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my! Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my! <laughs> They're on their way to see the wizard, the wonderful Wizard of Oz. They're being fallen into the Wicked Witch of the West's tricks by actually uh, putting a spell on those poppies. So once they're trying to get there, uh, Dorothy, as well as the Carly Lion, and even Toto have fell asleep. Um, Tin Man started to cry, but... Uh, of course, uh, Scarecrow was warning him not to because he'll be stuck as well. So they're the only two that's um, they're standing there. You know, they need they call for help until Glinda finally came, trying to remove the spell. So now they're finally awakened and they're ready to go into uh, the Emerald City Castle. <laughs> yes, that's where you see the doorman, Morgan. Telling them that the the bell rain is not working, puts in the sign bell out of order. Please knock. And there you go. And once they entered, that's where they begin to spot the entire castle filled with many people living there and hanging around. Yeah, they actually went into the um, yeah you know, the wash and dry a place where they get to. You know, feel groomed and clean and healthy, looking fabulous, you know, and wonderful, relaxing, so that way they'll be ready to meet the Wizard of Oz. Well, this was a hard one because <laughs> at first they, the wizard told them no. Dorothy started to cry because she'll never get to go back home or have everyone have everything that they were hoping that would help yeah because they they want the wizard to help all of them be able to have their freedom and stuff well once they finally got to meet the wizard as um, the doorman started to as well as the guard trying to help him well things kind of turn ugly once we meet the wizard in a ghostly face filled with smoke and fire and scaring them off that yeah he was about to ask them for a task to actually steal the broomstick from the Wicked Witch of the West yeah and they're off but the Cowardly Lion just ran as fast as he can and crashes through the, the glass window so they're all so all four of them, along with Toto, decided to make their way to the witch's castle, which then suddenly the witch had captured Dorothy, yeah, bringing in her flying monkeys around, and joined in with Toto. And they were plot to, to kill her and retrieve the slippers, but no such luck because the slippers were stuck. And once she tries to grab them, yes, she was all in shock. So Toto escapes and lead her to free the friends to the castle so that way they'll save her. Just a, middle, just a, a matter of uh, minutes. But they've been ambushed by free guards. You know, they had a fight until they finally disguise themselves so they can be able to go directly to the castle. All the way through um, the witch's room where she was trapped. Um, so now um, they finally freed Dorothy. They escape as soon as they could. 
until the Wicked Witch of the West, along with the guards, had finally got caught with them and, well, they tried to stop them, escape, too late, until the witch decided to take the broomstick, set it on fire, and was ready to burn the scarecrow before Dorfee finally brings in the bucket of water to, to throw um, the fire out on the scarecrow's arm and then accidentally splashes straight into the witch's face. And that's where she says, I'm melting! I'm melting! So on the yada yada yada. <laughs> yep, Dorothy killed her. And finally, she got the broomstick as the guards was were free from having to deal with the witch's orders. And now, hell, hell, Dorothy! Hell, hell, Dorothy! So now, um, the game had finally came back to the wizard so they can give uh, the wizard the broomstick. And little did we know, the Toto was smart that he just ran straight into the curtains, which happens to be, yes, the humbug of the wizard. And yes, apparently he insisted that he's a good man, but a bad wizard. After Dorothy calls him a bad man. So... What did they, so what the wizard did was, um, of course, give Scarecrow a diploma, the lion a medal for courage, and the Tin Man a ticking heart-shaped watch. So, so things are going great. And, of course, the wizard decided to take Dorothy and Toto off to his um, hot air balloon, so that way he'll be able to make it back home. But, unfortunately, Toto just... Started to chase down a Siamese cat um, with Dorothy trying to grab Toto, but it was too late because the wizard was on his way, so she cried. It's so like she won't be able to get back home to Kansas until Glinda finally came to help her by tap your tap those ruby slippers uh, three times and say, there's no place like home. Yeah. Well, close your eyes. And then suddenly, she's back home in Kansas. Yeah. Which at this rate, it might as well be a dream, or what seems to be, or that's what she thinks, that it's not a dream, it's just real. Yeah, because you know, she was knocked out unconscious after what happened during the storm. And this is where she explains, well, it wasn't a dream, it was real. And you were there, you were there, you were there, and you were there. And from now on, I'm going to stay here. This is my home. And I'll never run away again. And there's no place like home. <laughs> yeah, no doubt about it. Wonderful classic. Love it. Saw this as a kid especially in theaters on a big screen. I would have loved to see the 1998 re-release at the time when I was in Oregon, but of course, I think we already know that. And then I would have loved to see the IMAX 3D projection at the time when several theaters were playing it. So I know they were playing at the Grumman's uh, Chinese Theater, which is now TCL. But sadly didn't get a chance and I know everything's expensive these days it would have been quite beautiful but hey you know having to see this movie many times I just really endure it no doubt about it Julie Garland she was the right choice to play Dorothy Gale I know originally they were gonna get Shirley Temple but due to her contract of Fox and seeing that the producers at MGM had already uh, offered her for the role, you know, there was no such luck. Uh, they were also joining in with a, another actress um, by the name of, uh, I think it was uh, uh, Deanne uh, Durplin. Yeah, so that was a newcomer, an operatic voice. So. Uh, I know um, 
Ray Bulger was originally cast for the Tin Man, but then Buddy Epson was going to play the Scarecrow, but then later he was going to play the Tin Man. Of course, he had emphysema, and it was in critical condition, so then we learned that he got fired. That sucks. But luckily, you know, he spot a career doing TV shows, but... He's done several films in his career. Um, I know they're going to get W.C. Fields to play uh, the Wizard, but it was turned down by Ed Wynn before, and then later Wally Berry, till Frank Morgan was cast. Um, yes, Bird Lyre was signed on to play the Cowardly Lion. Charles Grape Wynn was cast as Uncle Harry. Uncle Henry. Um, they got um, a lot of cast joining in, yes, and you got Margaret, yeah, Margaret Hamilton as the Wicked Witch of West, which she was incredibly, uh, terrifyingly um, scary, but excellent. Yeah, play the role. Um, but they were all amazing, excellent in their roles. I mean, they really play the parts so well, almost directly from the books. I mean, even though they have to do several changes, uh, they created uh, some amazing map paintings around for the entire um, setting of of the Land of Oz, you know, like the castle, the Munchkin Land, the forces. And, but all of them are set designs too, like they had all these buildings that they built on. You know, and, and then they had to master it by using a free strip technicolor for the Land of Oz scenes. While the opening and the closing are just, you know, Kansas, all done in black and white, so sepia tone style. But has some amazing sets they've done, you know, try to make how the press scene and and sad and you know revolutionize the way Kansas would look. I mean and how they created the storm, you know, they even use sound effects. They use a lot of great practical special effects for its time. So now you know from that era that yeah, they've done a lot of work. It was actually the most expensive project and production ever made. Even though it was a trouble production, you know, they had trouble. I mean, even for the first time around, you know, their sets were were in flames. So they were actually going to work on it in San Francisco, but no such luck. I mean, until they finally got it done here at the studio lot of MGM. And things got better. And that's how the movie turned out to be, and, and it became a classic. Yeah, they did the wonderful score, and also beautiful music. Yeah, with songs like, of course, Over the Rainbow. Yeah, If I Only Had a Brain. Uh, we're off to see the wizard, and so on and so forth. And MGM has been known for doing musicals, of course. Uh, they've done several. I mean, as many as they can. And that's how it became part of the documentary of That's Entertainment, along with Part 2 and Part 3. Yeah. So, that's why it's so popular. I mean, but it'll always be remembered not only as a timeless classic, but it always would be remembered as a wonderful adaptation of the L. Frank Baum books. I mean, and Victor Fleming did an amazing job directing this film, considering the fact that he was working on Gone with the Wind, which, sadly enough, it overshadowed uh, The Wizard of Oz uh, um, for the Academy Awards, because yeah, they won several Academy Awards. Well, The Wizard of Oz only won two, but hey, it was up to challenge, and it's it's the toughest you could do. But in the end, that's why you know it's the most the biggest challenge of them all, <laughs> and that's why I love it.
I always love this movie. You know, it's the film that's for many ages, you know, from kids to adults to seniors. I mean, you'll always remember this movie from time to time. So that's The Wizard of Oz. And I give the movie, what else? Five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and there's no place like home.